Welcome to this presentation on water hammer prevention. Municipal water systems and water systems of all kinds need pumps large enough to handle peak demands. These pumps need to be able to supply everything from a single kitchen sink to running every tap in the city at the same time. These big pumps are made to come on, fill a water tower, and turn off. Then gravity drains water as needed from the elevated storage tank. Water has been supplied this way since the time of the Greeks and Romans. Smaller systems use compressed air and a hydropneumatic tank to push water out at any rate required. Water towers fill from a low level to a higher level, like from 110 to 115 feet. Hydropneumatic tanks usually have a 20 psi bandwidth between pump on and pump off. A 12,000 gallon hydro tank fed by a 400 gallon per minute pump can cycle on and off four to seven times per hour, which adds up to 61,000 cycles per year. A seven day pressure recording chart shows the pump cycling on and off thousands of times, which can cause many problems for the pump and the distribution system. Transient pressure waves are generated from every pump start and pump stop. Stronger pipe just bounces these transient pressure waves off faster, making them hit harder. Municipal distribution systems tend to use the strongest pipe available, which is why water hammer can be such a big issue in these systems. Transient pressure waves and thin wall pipe can travel 3,000 feet per second, while stronger pipe can bounce these waves down the line at 8,000 feet per second. That is several times faster than a rifle bullet. When these transient pressure waves hit dead ends, elbows, tees, and fittings, water hammer occurs. Pumps cycling on and off can cause water hammer spikes 10 times the pressure you see on the gauge. These spikes can split pipes, spew through pinholes, or break out big chunks of the strongest pipe known to man. Every time a pump starts, the sudden rush of water causes a check valve to pop open and gauges to swing wildly as transient pressure waves are sent shooting down pipelines, bouncing off elbows, tees, fittings, and slamming into closed valves or dead ends with tremendous force. A graph of system pressure shows a huge spike on pump start that takes considerable time to stabilize after water in the pipe finally gets moving. Using a soft start or VFD to ramp up the pump speed still causes transient pressure waves. Because head or pressure is gained by the square of the pump speed, nothing happens until the pump is up to about 75% of full speed. Then the pump ramps up so fast tremendous spikes are created before the water in the pipeline even starts to move. A graph of a pump ramping up slowly shows the pressure spiking all along the pipeline, even though the pump speed is gradually increasing. Turning off a pump also creates transient waves and repetitive water hammer. Multiple small leaks throughout the system are created by water hammer from pumps starting and stopping. These small leaks may only cause the grass to be a little greener in some spots. In other places, water trickles up from parking lots and roadsides. Added together, these small leaks account for millions of gallons of water being wasted. Every little leak in an underground pipeline is also a place for contamination to enter the water system. The high pressure spikes cause leaks in the piping, and the negative pressure waves actually draw dirty water in through the same leaky spots. The muddy water outside the pipes caused by the leaks actually gets sucked back into the pipe during instances of negative pressure. At other times, water hammer from pumps starting and stopping can cause major blowouts. Hundreds, even thousands of gallons per minute can be lost before the main lines can be shut down. Water bubbling up and running down the streets is an all too familiar sight. Huge sections of cities can be out of water for days as crews work around the clock digging up streets and repairing broken water lines. Incessant and repetitive pounding of water hammer as pumps start and stop is by far the biggest reason for water line breaks. In a very short time, large mainline breaks can waste millions of gallons of water, turning streets into rivers and flooding neighborhoods. When it comes to water hammer, an ounce of prevention is worth a hundred pounds of cure. 
since it travels at several thousand feet per second, stopping a transient pressure wave is like trying to catch a bullet with your teeth. How do we prevent water hammer and stop so much of our precious water from being wasted? The answer is easy, cycle stop valves. Cycle stop valves, or CSVs, prevent water hammer by providing a mechanical soft start, soft stop, and by varying the flow to match the demand, which maintains constant pressure throughout the system. CSVs eliminate most cycling, but when pumps do need to start or stop, the mechanical soft start, soft stop of a cycle stop valve prevents transient pressure waves from forming and reduces inrush current. Since the CSV can never fully close, starting and stopping a pump against an almost closed valve completely eliminates water hammer. A non-closing valve also eliminates water hammer that is common when ordinary valves pop open or slam shut. Once the pump is running, the CSV eliminates cycling by varying the flow to match the demand. The CSV makes the pump run continuously instead of cycling on and off hundreds of times per day as big pressure tanks and water towers fill and drain. This graph shows there are no spikes or dips as the CSV is maintaining constant pressure throughout a wide range of flow rates. Maintaining constant pressure and keeping the pump running continuously, cycle stop valves eliminate cycling, water hammer, pump failures, and wasted water. Constant pressure speaks for itself. Simply turning a bolt sets the CSV regulator to a precise pressure. This cycle stop valve maintains 65 PSI as demands vary from as much as the pump can produce to almost zero flow rate. Since cycle stop valves can make the pump produce as little or as much water as required, large pressure tanks and water tires are no longer needed. This 12,000 gallon pressure tank was replaced with a cycle stop valve and an 80 gallon pressure tank. Before the installation of the cycle stop valve, the 12,000 gallon tank was causing the pump to cycle on and off as much as 168 times per day between 54 and 74 psi, as seen on this pressure recording chart. After the installation of the cycle stop valve, the recording chart shows the pressure being maintained at a constant 70 psi as the pump has not cycled in days. The full seven day chart shows the pump cycled 840 times in five days prior to installing the cycle stop valve and zero cycles in two days since the installation of the cycle stop valve. Pumps are made for continuous duty. They will last longer when running 24 seven compared to cycling on and off even the slightest amount. When chosen properly, pump horsepower decreases as flow decreases. So running a pump 24-7 doesn't increase the electric bill. In some cases, running a pump continuously can decrease the electric bill as it takes lots of energy to start a pump and even more energy to repeatedly start a pump. It is counterintuitive, but most pumps will decrease the horsepower required by 50% or so by simply restricting the flow with a valve. When water towers are taken offline for service, a single cycle stop valve can supply any flow rate from a few leaky toilets to peak demand for an entire city of 40,000 people. Cycle stop valves work with many different types of pumps. Small and large submersibles work with cycle stop valves. Split case, in suction, and multi-stage centrifugal pumps work with cycle stop valves. Deep or shallow set turbines also work with cycle stop valves. Even jet pumps and submersibles for residential systems work well with cycle stop valves. The non-closing feature of the cycle stop valve is the key to preventing water hammer. Non-closing equals instant reaction, which delivers wave canceling technology like noise canceling technology. Positive pressure waves are canceled out with an instantaneous decrease in flow while negative pressure waves are canceled out with an instantaneous increase in flow. Cycle stop valves can save billions of gallons of water and millions of dollars on infrastructure. Call cycle stop valves today for more information or see our webpage at cyclestopvalves.com.